are all real numbers. Remember, the fancy R like that means real numbers. So that means every number that you've ever seen in your life, for all those real numbers, we're going to call them A. There's one little condition here. A can't be equal to zero. Because zero is neither positive nor is it negative. It's neutral, so it doesn't If we take A and we multiply it times negative one, that is the same thing as taking negative one times A and it's going to be equal to the opposite of A. Now, notice I didn't opposite say negative of A, because if A itself happens to be a, ne a negative number, the opposite of A would be a positive. Let me illustrate. Example. A is equal to negative 5. Okay? If A is equal to negative 5, and I take negative 5 times negative 1, I'm going to get what? Positive 5. Right, I'm going to get positive 5. Now, does that look like a negative number, positive 5? Now, that's why I don't like to say negative A. It's kind of a, mis, a misuse of words. So we say the opposite of A. Now it is time to take a look at some algebraic examples. What if you had some letters. The opposite of x times the opposite of y. Opposite of x times the opposite of y. Now, according to what we have set up here, I can write the opposite of x like this. I can write it as negative 1 times x. And I can write the opposite of y as negative 1 times y. Multiplication, as long as you're not doing anything else, it's all straight multiplication, you're allowed to rearrange, you're allowed to commute these numbers around. So I'm going to put these two negative ones out front. And I'll have negative one times negative one times x times y. Negative one times negative one is positive one xy which reduces to just x. So basically, if you see two negative signs in an algebraic expression, what like happens? Positive. Okay. So it turns out every time you compare up two of them, whoosh, whoosh, they're going to go away. All right? And that brings me to the next portion of this. And let's talk about the power one. Slap some parentheses around it. If I raise that thing to the second power, that is equal to strictly, literally, the literal meaning is negative 1 times itself, right? That's what the power of 2 is. So negative 1 times negative 1, we have that pair of negatives going together, counteracting one another through the multiplication rules. What if I and take the same power? negative 1, but this time I raise it to the third power? That's going to be equal to negative 1 times negative 1 well, times negative these two one. right there gave me a positive 1. I now must take that positive 1 times this negative 1 and I get negative 1. Negative one. All right. So that was a positive and this was a negative. Okay, what if I take negative 1 to the fourth power? That would be negative 1, bless you, times negative 1, times negative 1, times negative 1. Oh, look, I have two pairs here. And remember, we said every time you have a pair of negatives being multiplied, they multiply to positive, right? So this is the same thing as saying positive 1 times positive 1, which is, does anybody see a pattern starting to 1 to the fifth power? Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative one, negative one, times negative one. Negative, positive, negative. What do you think negative 1 to the 6th power is going to be? See? Positive 1. Right. All right, let's make it a little bit more interesting. What about negative 1 to the 457th power? How about negative 1 to the 100th power? Just in your own words, a little rule here that will like always, always work with powers. If you have an even number of negative signs, you're going to have a positive 
product. And if you have an odd number of negative signs, you're going to have an odd price. I, I must alert you to because I fell prey to this. And I was in college when I felt the notational thing that if your teacher doesn't really point it out to you strongly, you may overlook. Notation like that. The answer is not positive one. Because this is red, the opposite of one to the second power. Without the parentheses in here, you always have to do the exponent first, okay? If I take one and I square it, I get one. And then this little negative sign means take the opposite. Okay, so the opposite of one is negative one. Isn't that wild? And if I didn't point that out to you, believe me, you would screw it up. So that is equal to be negative one times negative one. We have to put parentheses around the negative one. So that stands as its own unit, and that whole unit is being